This is the basketball court, this is the playground, that's where I live, and there's the train tracks. And welcome back to Capital Tonight. The voice you heard there and the video you see is 10-year-old Lawrence. He and his family live in Ezra Prentice Homes. It's a public housing project. It sits right next to train tracks that carry crude oil trains. He's one of the faces of a movement to get an environmental bill of rights added to the state constitution for the right to clean air and water. Six states have already done this. New York is not one of them. Joining me in the studio to talk more about the efforts in New York is Willie White. He's executive director of A Village Incorporated, also a resident of the Ezra Prentice Homes. And then joining us from New York City is Morgan Pachma. He's from Effective New York. Morgan, thanks very much for being here. Mr. White, it's a pleasure. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Uh, So folks who are perhaps not familiar with Ezra Prentice, um, should just give us a little idea about what it is and where it is. I mean, it, you, you saw it there if you were looking closely, but it's right smack up against the train tracks. It truly is. Um, Ezra Apprentice is in the south end of Albany, New York, and um, when you say uh, right smack up against the train tracks, it truly, truly is. Um, not only the train tracks, but we have, uh, they're right there in the middle of 787. Yep. Um, there's a thousand diesel trucks that go through that community every single day. Um, you know, there, there's a county waste plant um, that Ezra has to deal with also. Um, they're in a toxic environment, and um, we're trying to bring awareness to that situation. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. also um, a route that trucks use, not 787, sure. but the local road that divides Ezra Prentice. Right. People go in and out of there. A lot of trucks go in and out of there because there's sure. also um, uh, some kind of energy plant that's not too terribly far away, if sure. I'm not mistaken, sure. right? Sure, So, So a village did a truck study, a truck count, to um, kind of determine how many trucks was going north and south of the... Um, and directly in front of the uh, complex itself. And we ended up uh, counting a thousand trucks every single day. We did, actually we did two day truck study. Mm -hmm. And each day we got an average of 997 trucks. So it's bigger than the Uh, oil trains issue. It's a a air quality issue. It's an environmental justice issue. It's the oil trains issue. It's really just a matter of the health of the residents and, and quite a few of whom are children. Exactly. There's uh, approximately 200 kids down there under the age of uh, 15. And, you know, they play in their playground. Um, the trucks are passing by. The trains are in their backyard. But the kids are oblivious to what's going on down well, except there. Except if they getting, have asthma or some sort of, of other course, health of problem. Of course. You know, it, uh, speaking of asthma, we did a, a collaboration with the uh, School of Public Health. Uh, led by our wonderful um, leader, Stacy Pettigrew, mm-hmm. who's the executive director mm-hmm. of the yep. Ecological S- Sustainability Center. And uh, she brought in some interns. So through the survey, halfway through the survey, we've identified um, a large number of cases of asthma, yeah. at least uh, 75 to 80 cases of asthma. And we're only halfway through the survey. So Morgan, I want to bring you in here. Um, this is a matter I mentioned of environmental justice, sure. uh, but also y- y- the Constitutional Convention is one that of Effective New York, which, just to remind people, is, is an organization headed by Bill Samuels uh, that's been pushing for a constitutional convention and, and before that constitutional amendments. I mean, why is it that you think that this needs to be in the Constitution? Because the state has taken any number of efforts to address these issues, not just at Ezra Prentiss, but elsewhere in the state, sort of piecemeal. Sure. sure. Well, it is staggering, Liz, the extent of the environmental problems that we see in the state. You know, here at Ezra Prentice, it's just a mile and a half away from the governor's mansion, and it is heartbreaking, the circumstances that people are living under. I mean, I couldn't believe it myself until I went there to film this ad that you can watch at EffectiveNY.com. You know, and these are uh, follow-ups to ads that we film with children in Hoosick Falls who are dealing with the, the horrible situation of toxic drugs drinking water. So the state is not addressing these problems uh, with the vigilance that it should. And more importantly, the people of New York don't have a right of action when their drinking water is toxic, when they're when the people of Ezra Prentice have to go through these this horrible, uh, you know, breathing this toxic air, they don't have recourse. Well, hold and on. that's Can what a constitutional file, amendment would do. Like uh, an Article 78 proceeding or bring a class action suit? I mean, neither of those things are possible. Kuzik Falls, for example, there is a class action suit against the polluters, right? I mean, you're suggesting that the state should be also held responsible, that's, and I'm not saying it should not, but an Article 78 doesn't enable you to do that? Th- that's right. This would, this would enable uh, New Yorkers to hold the state responsible, and it would 
would lift the burden of, uh, on the state to make sure that all New Yorkers have clean drinking water, fresh air, and a safe climate. And given the fact that the federal government uh, seems so determined to de-invest from environmental protections and to gut the Clean Air Act, we feel that it is absolutely important for New York to have the most, the strongest environmental protections in the country. So hold that thought for just one second, um, Mr. White. I just sure. want to bring you back into this sure. uh, conversation. I mean, there have been efforts in the past. I mean, there's been a lot of efforts. There's been environmental advocates who are pushing. Sure. Sure. Uh, the governor has had a number of um, conversations, as had the EPA prior to uh, the Trump administration's arrival. Uh, regarding oil trains specifically, sure. um, are, you're not satisfied that the state is recognizing the, the, the significance and the seriousness of the situation there? Well, we've been working closely with DEC, and DEC has been uh, uh, somewhat a good partner with us uh, moving forward, but we still have to hold them accountable in a sense where we think this process is moving slow. Mm. Um, you know, we've, um, we've met with DEC, EPA, we've met with the Department of Justice. Um, there's a lot of uh, in, um, environmental groups uh, around who's helping us fight this fight. I, I mentioned a, a group called PAWS. You know, um, we are we are not satisfied until something is done. Mm. DEC has proposed a, a, a $500,000 air study down there, um, and that's that's probably going to happen in May. But we think that, as Dr. King would say, the urgency of now, because this has been going on for a long, long time. Rightfully so, the governor and everyone else went to Hoosick Falls because those people shouldn't have to drink tainted water. But I think Ezra as a whole, because of it's a low-income community, underserved community, has been largely ignored. So, Morgan, a constitutional amendment, you know, is a pretty heavy lift. Sure, I, I, I mean, it needs to pass two uh, separately elected legislatures, then subsequently be approved in a referendum by the public. You could have a constitutional convention. There's a vote on that coming up, though the governor has more or less let it drop. I mean, he did take money out of the budget for a committee. It never made it. He put that in the last budget, and that failed, and he hasn't really stepped up to the plate. That's so correct. So why push it from a constitutional amendment uh, standpoint, it seems like a pretty high bar. Well, that's exactly what we're pushing for, or something that is extremely ambitious, something that hopefully will change the agenda of environmental protection in Albany. We intend to introduce this uh, through the legislature this session, and we hope that the legislature will take action on it, because as, as Willie was saying, this is an urgent matter. These are 200 children as apprentice who are living under conditions that we wouldn't you know, wish upon our enemies. Uh, and so you know, if, if, we, if the legislature is unwilling to do so, um, we are certainly open to pursuing it through a constitutional convention, but the urgency of environmental protection in our country right now is profound, and we're hoping that New York will be a model for the nation. Are those videos available online only at this point? Yes, they are right now. The two Hoosick Falls videos, the two Ezra Prentice videos that we've done in partnership with Environmental Advocates of New York. Uh, you can look at them at EffectiveNY.com, and there's also a petition to support our amendment. Will there eventually be television ads in this campaign? This, this is a developing campaign. Uh, you know, environmental advocates and Effective New York, we're, we're all in, and we are going to continue to bring attention to you know, these horrible conditions that so many New Yorkers are living under, including myself. I live in Greenpoint in right. Asthma Alley, and I think about uh, here in Brooklyn, my eight-year-old daughter and, and the conditions that she's growing up in. And just do you have a sponsor or some possibility of a sponsor in either house or both? Um, we, yes, we have a lot of interest from um, from members, both of the Assembly and from the Senate. But we, you know, we want to find the right person who will actually get this done. We don't want it to be a symbolic gesture. We want to pass legislation. And just uh, to close, I mean, mm -hmm. Ezra Prentice was built when? Um, in the 60s, early right. 60s. So right. that, mm -hmm. and there are other, if people are not familiar with Albany, there are other projects that are right up against the highway there and these are, train tracks you know, in the city. You think of Green Street, Green Street, the, the trains are right in their backyard also. So, um, and going um, north, you have uh, the Outer Yarborough apartments yep. down there. So, um, you know, we, to be honest with you, we are afraid of uh, not only the toxic air, but the explosion. Sure. If you look what happened to, in Canada, uh, well, these things were built before people were really aware of the significance of the of harm that some of these pollutants could cause, sure, and before sure, oil sure. trains were, be, were sure. something that even anybody thought about. So sure. um, now you're trying basically to catch up with the times and, and, and getting the state and the federal government to, to pay attention. Exactly. So yeah, we call on uh, Governor Cuomo to uh, take action and um, 
help us fix this situation. Well, I thank you both for your time this evening, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you.